This is a summary based on the notes that I have taken on Andrew Huberman's Focus Toolkit. All of the tools Andrew Huberman provided in his video are all of these. However, I will only discuss the bullet ones because I actually have personal experience in using those tools and as well as because I believe that they will be the most effective for the average person. If you want a full detailed description of each tool, then go watch the full podcast episode because I'm just here to summarize what I've learned to further my understanding in the topic and in hopes that it could provide value for other people. So the first thing that you have to understand is that you want to imagine focus as an arrow with each part of the arrow representing a different neurochemical that relates to focus and concentration. So the shaft, the long body, is epinephrine. The arrowhead, the pointy part, is acetylcholine. And you also want to imagine a propeller behind the arrow that is allowing it to travel forward. That is representing dopamine. Epinephrine, also called adrenaline, is responsible for focus and alertness. Without it, there is no focus and concentration. That is why it's the backbone and main body of this model. Acetylcholine acts similar to a spotlight. It can highlight certain neurons of the nervous system to be active. The reason that this neurochemical acetylcholine is the arrowhead is because again, it's similar to a spotlight. It can be narrow or broad. The more narrow and tightly focused the arrowhead is, the more focused you'll be able to concentrate to one thing. Whereas the more broad and wide the arrowhead is, the more area that it covers, thus making you focus on a wide spread of things, never really letting you focus on a single thing, rather multiple things. And those things could lead you to becoming distracted and sidetracked. Another example of how the arrowhead representing acetylcholine works is with this model. The picture on the left is a person that's concentrating all focus to a single location, task, whatever. Whereas on the picture on the right, the person is distributing their focus to multiple different things. And as you can see, the person on the left is making significantly more progress than the person on the right. However, in order to have ongoing amount of focus for long periods of time, you need dopamine, which is the motivational hormone. The more dopamine that is released doing something, the more you want to do that thing. That is why dopamine is being represented as the propeller for the arrow. Because in order for the arrow to continue traveling forwards, it needs something to propel it. Now for the actual tools. One of the most important things to build and maintain focus and concentration is to get good quality sleep for as much as 80% of the nights of your life. This is because not getting enough sleep and being sleep deprived will not help you focus whatsoever. You also want to think of mental work, so focus and concentration, as physical training, meaning that you actually have to warm up before you start working. In the gym, you don't go straight to the heavyweights, you warm up with lighter weights. Well, it's the same for focus and concentration. You have to warm up your brain by ramping up and increasing the three neurochemicals mentioned earlier. And some ways that you can actually do this is by listening to 40 hertz binaural beats before working. An app that Huberman recommends is an app called Brainwave. I actually checked it out and they have a bunch of presets for different things. And to be honest, I actually highly recommend that you check it out for yourself. A side note that you can actually listen to these beats before a workout to enhance the mind muscle connection that you want to achieve when doing hypertrophic training. If you're interested in that topic, I also have a summary on Andrew Huberman's videos on muscle growth and fitness toolkit. So you can check that out as well. Another thing you can try is listening to white, pink, and brown noise as they have been shown not to improve concentration, but to improve the transition to concentration. So they are a good way to warm up your brain for focus. And you can just listen to them on YouTube or Spotify. Another tool is cycling your focus. So what this means is that you do deep focus work for at least 90 minutes, then you give yourself time to rest your focus for 10 to 30 minutes. 
Think of this as like the gym again. You have to rest after a set to be able to perform the next. Well, it's the same with focus. You have to give yourself a rest time. One huge thing that could instantly improve your focus is limiting phone usage. By going on your phone when it's completely unnecessary, like on these 10 to 30 minute rest times, or when you're just taking a poop on the toilet, it completely kills your ability to focus. This is because you are adding another thing for yourself to focus on. Again, back to this model, you are adding more outputs for your focus to go to, never really focusing on a single thing. When you go on your phone, especially between focus work, you get distracted easily without even realizing it. Just a simple pop-up notification is enough to throw you completely off track. You might want to click on the notification, and then when you do, you realize it's your crush. And then you start to think to yourself, oh my gosh, I wonder what they said. Do they want to hang out? And then you view the message and you find out it's a TikTok link. You're a little disappointed, but you click on the link anyways. And it brings you to a video. And you watch it. You thought it was pretty funny. So you click on the comments. You scroll and you like a little of them. Then you click on the replies. And you scroll and you like a couple of them. And then you close the comments and you scroll do you see how much focus is being diverted away from the work that you were trying to do do you see how many little things you shifted your thoughts and attention to just by limiting your phone usage you can drastically increase your focus and in my experience instantly going back to those rest times the rest time should be occupied by activities that require zero effort and are automatic for you just do something that allows you to deliberately decompress yourself so do at least 90 minute deep concentrated work every single day and increasing either the number of deep work sessions or the time of the deep work sessions over time just like progressive overloading in the gym. You can think of it as sets and reps. You might start off with one set of 90 minutes and then eventually two sets of 90 minutes and then three sets of 90 minutes. And then you think to yourself that you could do it for even longer. So one set of 120 minutes, then two sets of 120 minutes. Then you've gotten so good that you could do a straight four hour deep work session. Just imagine how much work you could get done in that amount of time and with that amount of focus. Now transitioning to the diet side, one thing you can leverage is your blood glucose levels. When you have low blood glucose levels, you aren't able to perceive and think clearly. So having sufficient amount of glucose in your bloodstream can enhance the ability to think clearly. However, because of this, Fasting is only good if you do it correctly. If you want to fast to enhance your focus, do intermittent fasting. Because it's important to be in this medium of being fed, but not being too full. Because eating too much can diminish your focus and make you more sleepy, especially carbs. That's why the term carb crash exists. When you're digesting food, blood is diverted to your gut so it can actually digest the food. However, this also diverts blood from your brain, thus making you less focused and more sleepy and tired. So avoid eating a big meal before doing work. The key is to eat enough that you are nourished for the certain activities that you have to do, or just intermittent fast before working. Caffeine can also improve one's focus and concentration, and this enhancement in focus and concentration can also improve both physical and mental performance. However, make sure that you delay caffeine 90 to 120 minutes after waking. And generally, don't have caffeine 3 to 4 p.m. regardless if you are someone that can sleep whilst caffeinated because the quality of the sleep will be significantly worse than if you weren't. Cold water is an incredible way to increase focus because exposure to cold water can greatly increase epinephrine and dopamine levels in your brain. In addition, cortisol levels are raised to a healthy peak and supports immune system function, mood, and concentration and focus. Meditation for around 13 minutes can also improve concentration, 
especially visual exterocept meditation. NSDR or yoga nidra can also increase focus because it can replenish you if you are sleep deprived or just feeling tired. And for supplements, omega-3, particularly EPA essential fatty acids, can improve mood and cognitive performance and can modulate the circuits of focus and concentration. Around one to three grams is good for the average person. Another thing that can modulate the circuits for focus and concentration, as well as fuel neurons to function better, improve cognitive performance, improve physical performance, reduce fatigue, make your muscles bigger, give you superpowers, make you immortal, and much more, is creatine, monohydrates. Around five grams is good for the average person. And I will actually have affiliate links for the omega-3 and creatine that I use to improve my focus during things like working out and watching these Huberman Lab podcast episodes so I could produce and provide valuable videos. One of my goals for this month is to make my first money online. So if you want to support me, you can purchase one of those products by using those links. I would still advise you to consult with someone more informed and do your own research to see if you actually need to take those supplements. However, just to throw it out there, there has been many studies that have been shown that these supplements are safe and good for you. And I believe that they will make you perform and feel better, both mentally and physically. And that is all of the notes that I have taken on this Huberman Lab podcast episode. I also have summaries on Huberman's videos regarding some of the other topics I mentioned in this video, like sleep, muscle growth, and meditation. So you can check those out if you're interested. And let me know some feedback and ways that I could improve these videos. Or if there's any specific episodes that you want me to talk about. I love reading each comment because it motivates me to continue working and improving my skills to become the best version of myself so thank you for watching